Hi guys, uh, in this video I would like to give you an introduction to the philosophy of Jacques Lacan, who was uh, without a doubt one of the most difficult uh, philosophers ever. Um, reading him is uh, just as hard as reading Derrida, if not more so. Uh, however, you know, if you do get into, you know, his uh, theories, it's uh, really, really incredible stuff. It totally changes, you know, how you look at a lot of things. And it's just a, it, it's a different way of thinking. So Jacques Lacan was a French psychoanalyst. Okay, uh, so I said that, you know, he's a philosopher because uh, that's what, uh, you know, the sphere in which he's primarily studied. It's kind of interesting that, you know, he was a trained psychiatrist, a psychoanalyst, but, you know, modern day psychiatry largely disregards his work. Okay, uh, psychiatrists don't really study Lacan and don't really apply his uh, theories in practice. I mean, unless it's, you know, specifically a, uh, you know, Lacanian psychoanalyst. So primarily, you know, philosophers, uh, you know, deal with his uh, work, you know, Derrida. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, you know, one of the greatest authorities on Jacques Lacan is uh, this great Yugoslavian philosopher Slavoj Zizek. And there is a gazillion videos uh, by him on YouTube. So check him out as well. So, you know, Jacques Lacan, uh, you know, why is he so hard to understand? Like, you know, did he try to, you know, confuse you? Did he try to, you know, intimidate his readers or like, what's up? Well, the main reason is that he did not really like to write, okay? Um, his uh, seminars, and there is like 20 volumes of his uh, seminars, you know, like if you go to Amazon, you know, and look up, you know, Jacques Lacan, you'll get, you know, seminar one, seminar two, seminar three. Well, these were not written, you know, these are essentially lecture notes taken by his assistants and students, you know, but he did not, you know, write them. And his uh, major work, you know, kind of his, uh, you know, compilation of his major essays known as Ecree, um, which means uh, writings in French, you know, they were not really meant to be written, like he just essentially his, you know, publisher, uh, you know, uh, forced him into, you know, producing this, uh, you know, manuscript, and he did. So he just, uh, you know, did not write, did not like to write. He was, uh, uh, he, he kind of liked uh, the approach of, I guess, Plato and, you know, those ancient philosophers where you, uh, you know, speak, you have a conversation, you kind of have this dialectic between, um, you know, teacher and student or, uh, you know, between, you uh, professor and uh, sort of these, uh, you know, young practicing uh, students of psychoanalysis in his case. But uh, he definitely preferred, uh, you know, verbal communication to writing, you know, so that's one of the reasons. So let us, uh, you know, say a couple of things about uh, <coughs> what Lacan actually, you know, what his uh, theory is actually all about. So his, uh, you know, thinking is extremely, extremely diverse and rich. And he used, uh, you know, concepts from a lot of different fields. And that is another challenge, uh, you know, to understanding Lacan is, you know, just the diversity of, uh, diversity of his uh, sources, you know, because uh, in addition to, you know, being a psychoanalyst and, you know, being a heavyweight philosopher, uh, you know, he was also a linguist, okay? Um, he was very influenced by the writings of Fernand de Saussure, who was a Swiss uh, linguist. And uh, in addition to that, uh, you know, he was very well read in literature. Like there is, uh, so literature is something we kind of have to know to some extent to understand him, for instance, you know, the writings of uh, Edgar Allan Poe, uh, you know, essay number one in his Ecree talks about um, uh, Poe's uh, story called uh, The Purloined Letter. Um, <clears throat> you know, he talks about uh, people like, you know, Moliere and Balzac, you know. So that's uh, another, you know, source of, uh, you know, his, uh, 
inspiration. And uh, also, there is mathematics involved in his writings. Uh, you know, he was very interested in this area known as topology, which uh, it's kind of like geometry, but it deals with uh, things that don't change. Like, you know, kind of to give you a simple example, like without cutting or gluing, like you could say that a cup and a donut are the same. Like if you, like let's say, um, imagine a cup made out of you know molding clay you know you could squish it you know without ripping it into a donut so you know in this way so you know like in a sense they're the same shape you know so that's what topology is all about and you know um, this area of mathematics was very important for Lacan so so essentially he is hard uh, because he did not like to write and because in addition to you know knowing your Freud, you gotta know something about linguistics, about mathematics, about literature, um, you know, which is a lot. And you know, most people, you know, find one area of knowledge hard enough to you know master. But you know, Lacan requires you to know like four areas. So uh, Lacan, okay, what was he trying to do like why did he sort of go on this uh you know why did he um invent his own way of thinking well there are several reasons um uh, you know why so essentially um as a young psychoanalyst he thought that uh freud has not been understood Okay, so we need to go back to Freud, and that's essentially uh, what he, you know, tried to do. So uh, going back to Freud, like he thought that, uh, you know, Freud needs to be completed. Okay, he thought that uh, Freud's writings are not done. You know, like Freud, it was terrific work in progress, but it needs to be completed. So he claimed that he was completing Freud's uh, project, essentially. So things, those, uh, you know, insights that Freud had, Lacan claimed that he finished them. He brought them to their logical conclusion. So that's, you know, kind of number one. And number two is uh, there was uh, one area of psychoanalysis and psychology which he particularly disagreed with, and that is ego psychology. Okay, um, so essentially two uh, major, uh, you know, things he tried to achieve um, early on in his career. And that is, you know, complete uh, Freud's um, concepts, you know, complete, uh, you know, what Freud had started. And to criticize uh, ego psychology, to kind of, you know, to have a, uh, you know, way to treat uh, patients psychoanalytically without ego psychology. All right. So, um, Lacan's uh, view of subconscious is pretty different from Freud's, okay? And that is uh, a really interesting, uh, you know, thing. So, uh, of course, if we talk about, you know, anybody who is doing, you know, psychoanalysis, I mean, the central concept in psychoanalysis is the subconscious, Okay, like, um, and I'm sure you, you know this uh, stupid metaphor about sort of how we have this, you know, iceberg above water, that's our consciousness, you know, the water level is uh, our ego, and, you know, beneath there is this humongous glacier, you know, and that is the subconscious, you know, this kind of stupid metaphor, which I find annoying. Um, so that's essentially how sort of, you know, Freud perhaps, you know, thought about it, uh, you know, and he and Lacan has a totally different uh, kind of view. Like uh, for Lacan, uh, subconscious is not sort of this, you know, deep, dark force, but it's our linguistic system of signifier manipulation. And if you're new to Lacan or to, you know, philosophy, you're like, what the heck did he just say? So let me uh, clarify this for you. So for Lacan, <clears throat> you know, like I said, uh, he was very influenced by linguistics. 
and particularly he was influenced by the work of uh, you know Ferdinand de Saussure and Saussure introduced this concept of signifier signifier and signified so um, well how do we you know kind of think about language okay well you know we probably think about it as uh, kind of like you know words in our heads you know like you know let's say you know here is a concept you know book and there is this object book you know so i think sort of you know thoughts correlate to objects okay and so sure challenges this you know view totally well because i mean if you think about it it's not really that uh you know kind of like if you really think about your mind and about you know your consciousness and about uh, you know things that happen uh, you know the mental phenomena it, it it's not really how language functions okay it's not that oh i think you know there's this you know book and there's the the thing book no it's more intralinguistic it's not that uh you know you know this you know concept you know book corresponds to this picture but it's more like you know the word book is similar to the word brook you know like a river you know brook or it's um um you know it's to some to a lesser extent similar to the word you know bunch you know it kind of starts as a you know with a b um and it's similar to the word let's say broke like see so the the thing is w words in a language form a very interesting system they form a network okay and this network is called you know the system of signifiers so you know signifiers are essentially words okay and the reason why they're not just called you know words and that this kind of took me a while to understand you know why use this you know uh, unnecessarily complicated language you know signifier signify because well it's a different structure it's a different uh, approach like with this approach we we do not talk about you know kind of thoughts corresponding to objects but we talk about signifiers you know words and how they relate to other words and their dynamics you know how one word is similar to another but it's not similar to another word so you might say well if we have these signifiers which are words in a language well what do they correspond to because you know we're talking about saussure right now so instead of you know a signifier corresponding to an object well what do we have instead well we have a signifier corresponding to a signified which is a meaning okay so you know the word book in my mind does not correspond to this you know thing right here but it corresponds to a certain mental meaning so you know think about it you know when i say the word book in your mind well you imagine a book you know this kind of thing you know and, and you know how a book looks like of course so signifiers have corresponding you know signifieds okay and this is key like this is very very central to lacan's uh, way of thinking so he like almost every page of his writings has you know something to say about you know signifier so our language you know which is a system of you know signifiers and you know signifies interacting with one another our language is our subconscious and this is an incredible incredible insight and um you know you know this is a very very deep thought and it, it's just incredible if you think about it like uh, so lacan says our subconscious is structured like a language and uh, you know this kind of makes sense if you think about it like let me give you an example um you know like there is so much you can um you know figure out about a person's uh you know thoughts and feelings just based on what they say you know like the questions that they ask you you know it's like like for instance if you know someone you know asks you well you know like is your job going good okay and and you know it, it might seem like a really just an innocent question you know is your job going fine but you know what they really try to say you know ask you is well are you making as much money as i do you know like 
are, are you, you know, safe about your job or are you scared you might get fired? You know, do you feel, you know, kind of, uh, you know, like you see there are all these kind of um, subconscious motivations, which, you know, kind of result in a, in an innocent question, how is your job going? So this is really, really central for Lacan. So in order to understand our mind, we have to, well, understand our language and we have to understand how different signifiers uh, displace one another, how they modify one another, how they might cancel each other. And all of our, you know, all of these kind of, you know, uh, diseases, you know, like let's say paranoia, schizophrenia, they all uh, somehow have to do with signifiers being you know replaced or substituted so essentially this linguistic gymnastics if it goes wrong you get a mental disease okay so let me recap kind of so far um so for lacan um in order to understand our mind we have to understand the language uh, that we use uh you know language is a system of signifiers and you know if something goes wrong in this significant signifier system you get a mental disease essentially all right so this is the most important uh you know this is central to lacan's and um since uh, you know this is just an introductory video uh let me talk about just one more central concept of uh you know lacan's uh, thinking and that is his uh registers of reality okay so for lacan there are three uh, three kind of uh, uh, three realms, okay, three domains of existence, you could say, uh, which interact with one another, and they do have a lot to do with this, you know, signifier business we're talking about. Uh, so essentially, they are the imaginary, the symbolic, and the real, okay. These three really, really matter for Lacan, and they're central. Um, so the imaginary is, uh, well, essentially the image that you have of yourself. And, um, you know, a lot of uh, kind of philosophers and scientists have criticized Lacan for, you know, kind of not being scientific enough. He's not being empirical enough. But guess what? That's mistaken because, uh, you know, he did have a very, um, you know, empirical theory, at least one. And that is, you know, the theory of the mirror stage. So, you know, Lacan has this, you know, interesting question. Um, when does the baby, you know, form a concept of a me? Okay, it's like, I mean, you, you have this baby who is, you know, kind of making sounds, you know, making, you know, moving its limbs. So how does that baby form the concept of, you know, me? That's me, you know, and, you know, that's kind of not me. And he says, when the baby looks in a mirror. So there is this point when, you know, when a baby, you know, looks in a mirror and sees this image and realizes, wow, this is me. So that's, how, you know, the imaginary uh, realm, you know, that's what it is, is this um, realm of illusory images, okay? Those images, they kind of give us this illusion of whole, wholeness, you know, it's like, you know, a baby kind of feels like these urges, it's incoherent, you know, it's like I want to, you know, suck on my mother's breast, you know, get some of the yummy milk and, you know, I want to pee and it, it's just kind of incoherent. But then when it sees an image, it for the first time in its life, you know, gets a sense of unity. Okay, so that's uh, what the imaginary gives us. It gives us this unity. And once again, if something goes wrong at this stage, you know, you get mental diseases later on in life. Um, well, essentially, this, uh, you know, imaginary gives us unity and it also gives us dialectic. You know, uh, like all these concepts about, um, you know, finite, infinite, Lacan says dialectic starts uh, with the imaginary, you know, because you go from fragmentary to unified. And, you know, that's what dialectic is. It's just kind of conflict and then unification. So soon after this, uh, you know, soon after the imaginary stage, uh, a baby has to enter the symbolic uh, realm of being, and that is the linguistic, uh, essentially, the linguistic domain, and all of us kind of participate in language. And, uh, 
you know, that's where this, uh, you know, signifier business uh, sort of plays central role. So this stuff we're talking about, you know, signified, it's the symbolic, um, you know, domain of existence. And this realm is associated with uh, you kind of, uh, you know, entering culture, okay, entering adult life. And it uh, also has to do with this... Uh, concept uh, of father okay and of course i'm sure you've heard uh, you know this you know people make fun of it you know they say kind of in psychoanalysis you know it's all about you know a boy wanting to you know screw his mother and you know wanting to kill his father and um, you know these are metaphors that's what you gotta understand it's not like literal it's you know it's not that every boy wants to screw his mother it's just that he misses the comfort you know uh, you know it's not that he wants to kill his father it's that you know, father is kind of on the way, you know, between him and the mother, you know, that's, um, and, you know, Lacan doesn't, um, you know, takes a, a different spin on uh, Freud's Oedipus, con uh, Oedipus complex, which we find in Freud. And for Lacan, you know, once you enter the imaginary, uh, you know, you, of course, get this comfort from your mother, while the father comes in and he rips your mother away from you. And that's when you kind of, as a baby, that's when you realize that you got to enter the symbolic. You know, you have to participate in culture, in law, and in language. And once again, if you do not successfully integrate into this domain, uh, you know, you get problems, you know, psychological uh, ailments, you know, diseases. And finally, there is this, uh, you know, real... Uh, domain which is uh, the hardest one to understand but it's essentially you know just this kind of raw reality okay um, kind of uh, you can think of, about it as uh, you know this kind of terrifying um, you know emptiness or something <laughs> um, before you were born like before dialectic before um, you know, the symbolic there is something that I mean you know, because uh, both of these are, you can say, human forms, uh, you know, they're sort of related on a human. But what is there actually that exists and which is not reducible to images and which is not reducible to symbols? And, you know, that's the real. And, uh, you know, uh, Lacan says it, you know, rips a hole in, you know, the symbolic. So uh, essentially, yeah. So there are three domains, imaginary, symbolic and uh, real, you know, that's uh, another, you know, central concept of uh, Lacan's philosophy. So uh, that's uh, an introductory, uh, you know, class to uh, Lacan's uh, theories.